In this lecture, we will talk about some special circumstances that occur when we sell an asset that has been depreciated with the depreciation accounting method. The salvage value that we receive when selling an asset may be different from the book value, and that may lead to a taxable gain or a taxable loss. We will focus primarily on assets that are used in production, distribution, and transportation. Those are called personal property, as opposed to real property, which is real estate. There are some cases where a capital gain may def be defined for a personal property used in production, distribution, or transportation. Let's look at a simple example where we have a four-year project with varying operating revenue. We're going to allocate $30,000 of equipment depreciation using the MACRS specified percentages for the five-year property class. The selection of the property class, really the depreciation lifetime, depends upon the type of asset, and that's based on tax agency guidelines. The fact that the project lifetime is less than the depreciation lifetime is really not important for selecting the property class, except in rare circumstances. So ordinarily, the property class or the depreciation life is based on the guidelines. The project may be shorter, the same, or longer in terms of the number of years. We'll have an estimated salvage value after four years of 7,500. But with the MACRS method, this salvage value is not used in computing the depreciation year to year. Our marginal tax rate will be 38% in this example, and then we'll obtain the profit after tax and, of course, the cash flow after tax. Here are the specified percentages for the first three years, 20% in year one, 32% in year two, 0.192 in year three. And these come from the tables for the five-year specified percentages method. Applying these to the $30,000 asset value gives us the depreciation amount and then we get our book values resulting from that. Normally then, in year four, if we were to look up the specified percentage, that would be 0.1152. Applying that to the 30,000 gives us a depreciation of 3,456. That would give us the book value of 5,184. But if we terminate the project in year four and sell the asset in year four, then a special condition has to be imposed. We're only allowed to get half the depreciation. We're not allowed to drive the book value down to this amount. In the year of sale, if the sale is early, and in this example, since it's a five-year property class, any sale before the sixth year is an early sale or a premature sale, we're not allowed to take this full amount, the full year of depreciation. Conceptually, we're only allowed to get half a year, so we have to take half the normal percentage, and apply that. So then the book value really would be 6,912. So this is an important thing to remember. In a premature sale, only half the usual depreciation is allowed. If we were to sell it in year six, that's not considered premature. We would take the full amount. Of course, the year six amount for a five-year property class has already been computed to be half. Graphically, what's happening is we have the book value dropping in the usual fashion to 24,000, 14,400, 8,640, and 5,184. And then we're selling the asset in the fourth year, presumably somewhere near the end of the fourth year. Because we're selling it in the fourth year, the depreciation in year four is half the usual amount. So we're only allowed to take half the depreciation. The book value then becomes 6,912. Another thing is happening, however, and that is the book value does not equal the salvage value. Our salvage value is 7,500, a little bit above the book value. This graph is a little hard to read, so let's take a closer look. Here we are in the fourth year, looking at the book value at the end of the third year, 8,640. Normally, we would want to drop this book value to 5,184, that would be the book value at the end of year four if the asset is not sold. But because we're selling it, we're only allowed to take half this normal amount. So that then the depreciation in year four would be this portion right in here, which is equal numerically to the difference between 8,640 and 6,912. This is our ending book value. That's the book value when we sell the asset. 
And then, of course, the salvage value is a little bit above that, the salvage value being 7,500. That difference between the book value and the salvage value, then, is a taxable gain. So here we have the first portion of the table. We have the equipment depreciation, where this fourth year is half of what it would normally be. That leads us to our taxable income, 38% tax, the profit after tax, then, of course, the cash flow after tax obtained by taking profit after tax and adding to that the equipment depreciation. Notice that in this example, we have labeled the first column cash before taxes because it includes different types of cash. It includes cash from operations. It also includes cash from the sale of an asset. The difference between the salvage value and the book value is called a gain on the sale of an asset. It's also called depreciation recapture. And it's taxed at the normal rate. In our example, the income tax rate is 38%. So 38% of 588 is a tax of 223 that gives us a profit after tax of 365 for that particular transaction. That's the sale of the asset. The book value portion, the 6,912, is not taxed. We never claimed that amount as a depreciation expense. Therefore, it escapes taxes. Then we have our sums, column totals here as in the normal fashion. So the important thing to remember is that the taxable gain on the sale, what's usually called depreciation recapture, is taxed at the ordinary rate. We compute that by taking the book value, subtracting from that the salvage value, I'm sorry, the other way around. The book value portion of the sale is not taxed. That comes in as a tax-free cash flow. Let's look at example two. This is similar to example one with an important difference. We're anticipating that the salvage value is going to be 3,000. Income tax rate is the same, and we'll go ahead and obtain the profit after tax and the cash flow after tax in the same way. The $3,000 salvage value is considerably less than the, salvage, the book value when we sell the asset, and that's going to lead to a taxable loss. First part of the table is the same as before. Our equipment depreciation is the same pattern. So these four lines are the same as they were in the previous example. Now we have a loss on the sale of the asset. That's the difference between the $3,000 proceeds and the book value of the asset. The book value was 6,912 after taking all these depreciation amounts if we subtract the book, from the book value the actual proceeds, we have a loss on the sale of the asset. And that loss becomes a tax credit. We apply the 38% tax factor on that. And that minus 1,487 now subtracts from our other taxes in year four. So the total tax we're paying in year four, then, of course, is the 2,307 minus the 1,487. The book value portion of the sale, of course, is still there. We add that back in, and we get our total cash flow after tax by summing that last column. There are a number of different ways to do this particular computation. This one in particular is convenient because algebraically it's the same as it is for example one. Now we can make an important observation. Normally for assets used in production, distribution, or transportation, the salvage value of the asset will be less than the installed cost. Usually the assets decline in value. In that case, the gain, if there is a taxable gain, is called depreciation recapture, and it's subject to ordinary income tax rates. There are rare cases involving assets used in production, distribution, or transportation where the salvage value may exceed the installed cost or basis. 
in that situation, that part of the gain that's above the original purchase price in accounting terms in excess of the basis, that's called the capital gain. And it may be taxed at a lower capital gain tax rate. That depends on the tax law that's in effect that particular year. Let's look at an example, example three, very similar to example two, but now let's assume that the actual salvage value is 32,000. Now remember, we only paid 30,000 for this. So here we have that rare situation where we're selling a used asset for more than what we paid for it. In addition, we took depreciation on this asset. Since the book value is 6,912, we have that portion between the original basis, book value times zero, and the book value at the time of the sale, that's called depreciation recapture. Now this is 23,088. The difference between the actual salvage value, 32,000, minus the original installed cost is 2,000, and that's called a capital gain. And that capital gain is taxed at a lower rate. The 23,088 is added to operating income. And perhaps the capital gain would be taxed at 20%, or in some cases, 15%. That rate typically is lower than your operating income tax rate. You just simply have to look up in the tax law what the current rate is for capital gains. What's happening then is we bought the asset for 30000 We applied the depreciation. These are the resulting book values. The 6912 is the book value, recognizing that conceptually we're only taking half a year depreciation in the fourth year. But then we're selling this thing for 32000 so this difference between the selling price, the actual salvage value, and the book value consists of two types of gains. The first type of gain is the depreciation recapture. That's the amount of depreciation that we took that, in retrospect, was too much depreciation. It's all legal, of course. We take the depreciation based on the tax law. And then if we wind up selling the asset for more than the book value, that difference is recaptured for tax purposes. So that's the difference between the original installed cost of the asset or the original basis and the final book value at the time of sale. That's the depreciation recapture portion. The other portion that's above the original installed cost, the 32,000 minus 30, that's called the capital gain. Let's then work our table again depreciation is the same as it was before. These columns are all the same. In fact, the, these lines that we see here are exactly the same as we saw in the previous example. Now we have a fairly large cash before tax. That's the depreciation recapture. All of that is taxable now in this particular example. We apply the normal tax rate. In this example, it's 38 percent. We get profit after tax and the cash flow after tax. And then we have the additional amount, this additional portion of the sale, the difference between 32,000 and 30. That is also taxable, but in this example, that's a taxable gain for a capital gain. We're going to tax that at a lower rate. In this example, we're applying a 20% tax rate to this $2,000 profit. The sums then, of course, give us our total cash flow, total profit after tax. And we can do a check at this point. We can look at all the cash before taxes, look at all the taxes we paid, and see if it gives us the same value for cash after tax. Our total tax, sorry, our total cash before taxes is 73388 Take that amount. How much did we spend on the equipment? We spent 30000 on it. How much tax did we pay on it? 18788 that is the same total as our cash flow after taxes, 24628 So we have a check on the uh, total cash flow after tax. There are different ways you can perform this check. This is just one particular method. So in summary, we have looked at the situation where the salvage value received when selling an asset may lead to a taxable gain or loss. 
And normally that's called a depreciation recapture. That's a common situation, and that portion may be positive, then it's called depreciation recapture. If it's negative, then it simply goes in algebraically the same way, but it results in a tax credit. And we also looked at the situation where you might sell an asset for more than the installed cost. Then you have to split the gain into two parts, the first part being the depreciation recapture, the second part being that portion of the proceeds that are above the original installed cost. That's called a capital gain, usually taxed at a lower rate. And that is a rare situation for assets used in manufacturing, distribution, and transportation.